Hi there, my name is Johnny from Man and Machine. I hope everybody is well and enjoyed the presentation so far. Um, so in this presentation, we're going to be looking at the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Um, before I start, I'll just go through a quick PowerPoint, kind of explain some main features of this, because um, I'm going to be doing a demo, uh, but I'm going to be going through fairly high level features. So it's really just understanding some things that I like less when I'm going through it, because it is, there is a lot to it, basically. Um, so just to introduce myself, um, I'm Johnny. Uh, my background has been in structural and civil engineering. Um, I got a puppy in lockdown. I'm sure everybody else got one too. It's just one of those things and everyone's doing it. Um, I enjoy climbing and I've managed to get some climbing in this year, which has been pretty decent. So the hobbies are coming back online as well. So that's a bit about myself. All right, labor the point. Um, so what I'm going to go through today in the Autodesk Construction Cloud as man and machine, uh, we, we do training and everything that we're going to be looking at today. We can support everything we're looking at today. Um, we can also look at custom setups and kind of helping you with those kind of niche projects that you might get. Um, so that's a bit about myself and man and machine. Um, let's just dive straight into what we've got now. So what I want to first do is just place the Autodesk Construction Cloud, like what's new, kind of how this has happened, uh, a bit of a timeline if you like. Um, so some of you may have heard some of the kind of tools that have been out there, platforms that already exist, BIM 360, Assemble, Plan Grid, um, and others, the acquisitions that essentially Autodesk have made. And what Autodesk are looking to do um, with this, and the reason that the construction cloud has come about is it's the unification of all of those um, investments and those platforms um, that already exist. Um, so what we're looking at is an amalgamation of all the tools um, that are already out there kind of thing and more. There's still investment, there's still development in all of those tools as well. So in their own right, um, they are very good platforms. Um, so looking at what we've got and what we'll be looking at today, we are going to be looking at like the whole workflow inside a project as best we can. From design all the way through to operation, there are parts of Autodesk Construction Cloud that are going to be really useful for everybody on a project at all the stages. Um, so looking at the different modules, um, the main one really to talk about first of all, um, and really kind of hammer this point home, is that the Autodesk Docs platform, which is the foundation for all of the modules that we're going to be looking at today, is actually in your AEC collection. So if you have an AEC collection, whether it's single user or multi-user, you will have the capability to do what we are going to be looking at in Autodesk Docs. And there are some really nice new features that have just come about um, inside of Autodesk Docs. If you're looking at running any projects to ISA 19650, they're going to be kind of key in making sure that your document controllers have a nice ride. Um, so that's Autodesk Docs. Um, the three tools, that, uh, the tools that we have inside of Autodesk Docs, um, if we just look at some of the basic functionality, uh, it's a really good way of making sure you can view the latest drawings. Um, in the little video we've got here, we've got lots of different file types that we can actually view on Autodesk Docs. So if you have anybody um, that doesn't have access to the software to be able to view DWGs, Revit files, Navisworks files, um, it's a really good way of being able to share those things. The other thing I di didn't actually mention right at the beginning, which I should have mentioned is, all of these platforms are now bring your own subscription, uh, which means that if you know anybody that have the licenses to this, you can invite them into your projects and they'll be bringing their licenses to you. Um, so one of the new features that I will be talking about and actually demonstrating in a bit of detail when we get to the demonstration is the new ISO 19650 tool inside of Autodesk Docs. Um, and this is really, really useful for, like I say, document controllers. Anybody who's gonna to need to kind of control the data uh, when they're uploading files into Autodesk Docs. Uh, so they're just a few of the features you've got. I will be demoing it and going through a lot more. Uh, but what we're going to look at now is the modules that you can plug into Autodesk Docs. So these don't come with the AC collections. The, uh, these are extras, but they all have very useful functionalities in their own right. So the first one we're going to look at is Autodesk BIM Collaborate or Collaborate Pro. There's actually two licensed um, platforms to this. So looking at some of the functionality in here, if you get Collaborate Pro, what you are getting is the ability for teams to be able to co-author in Revit, Civil 3D and Plant 3D on the cloud. So they could take their laptops to anywhere with Wi-Fi and they would be able to work on those projects in a team if they were so wished. 
Um, and really what this is doing is it's bringing all the teams together as well. So if you do have multidisciplinary teams that are using those softwares, this is a really good way to make sure that they can all talk to each other as well using this platform. Um, so what I've got in the image there is a uh, project inside of Revit being initiated in the cloud. Um, so what comes with Collaborate? Um, so if you just get Collaborate or you get Collaborate Pro, you get the modules inside of um, Autodesk Construction Cloud to be able to manage all the data that everybody's sharing. So what we're looking here is the swim lanes where you can view 3D models. You can see what's changed between the last release and this release. You're really easy able to share things. And it's a really quick way to come up with resolutions on the project as well for people to be able to kind of talk to each other and be able to have that really clear structured information handover on the project. Um, one of the other cool tools inside of here, which is now included with Collaborate um, or Collaborate Pro is the model coordination tool. So this is automatic clash detection. When teams are uploading their models, you can set this to look at those uploaded models and automatically clash them and create a matrix of clashes. So we'll be looking at that in this. Um, one thing to mention, just in case I forget to mention it, is very recently uh, in the construction cloud, you can now actually pick those issues up inside of Revit as well. So if I was assigned an issue and go into Revit, this issue here maybe, and I can go fix it and find that issue directly in the native platform. Really, really useful stuff. Uh, so let's collaborate and collaborate pro. Um, what we have next is Autodesk Takeoff. Uh, so really useful for anybody doing takeoffs or quantity surveying on a project. Um, there's lots of useful tools if you're using 2D or 3D, um, you can use both. So if you've got people who feel like they want to work a bit more traditionally, you've still got that 2D option. Um, but it's really going to kind of save time, making sure that all of the information is in one place. That's really the, the key um, idea of this is making sure you have the latest drawings to do the takeoffs from in one place that everybody can access. And something quite cool about this as well is that um, multiple people can actually work on the takeoffs um, at the same time. Um, also with takeoff as well, you have the option to do takeoffs from 3D. So a lot of drawings now are actually be created from the 3D model. So um, for anyone who's kind of worried about moving from the 2D to the 3D, all I can say is really, if there's, if there's things in the 2D that aren't in the 3D or vice versa, um, then there'll be something wrong with the, either the PDF version or something that's been released. So using the 3D model or the capabilities of the 3D model is going to give you uh, much, much quicker capabilities and also um, those accuracies as well. Um, and also you can obviously do this from anywhere as well. You're not constrained. So if you've got Wi-Fi, you've got a browser, you don't need a particularly powerful computer. You can work on all of those things in there. So that was Autodesk Takeoff. We are now looking at Autodesk Build. Um, so this is a, a biggie in terms of the amount of functionality that you get in Autodesk Build. Um, I haven't put any browser images up, but inside of Autodesk Build, you a good way of getting all of the latest drawings to site. Essentially, the entire platform is, is really well designed for the site to get information back to the office. So it's built from the site back to the office rather than the office to the site. Uh, lots of different ways of communicating using issues, markups. Uh, you can actually compare the um, drawings in the app itself, which is a really nice way if you're on site to know that if there are any changes, it's, it's clear and visible um, if you're installing something maybe. Um, and one of the, the key features really of Autodesk Build is the smart PDF functionality, which I'll be demonstrating. Um, if you have paper versions of your checklists, your quality inspections on site, you want to go through a digital change using those smart PDFs, you can get the same format that somebody has been using for 10, 15 years into a digital format. And there is no change other than the fact that they'd be using a iPad or, or a tablet to fill that form in. So a really nice uh, way of uh, dealing with change management. And also another way of um, keeping tabs on those documents, those photos. Um, there is a really good tool in there called assets as well. So the whole point as well, just to go back right to the beginning really and talk about the unification of this is the unification of information on a project as well. Um, so if somebody on site creates a photo, the photo is attached to a checklist, the checklist is attached to an asset, there's this information that we can follow. If there's something that happens in the future and all we have is the image from that image, if it's on this platform, we can follow it from where it came from 
through an issue, through a checklist, um, and find out all of the things that it was um, that that kind of photo or that issue was touching on the site at the time. So the kind of relevance and the unification of information. So that's a bit about all the platforms. What I'm going to do now is jump into the demonstration. So um, I'm doing this obviously over an internet connection. Hopefully it's going to be okay working on this. Um, so I'm already on the landing page. Johnny, sorry to butt in. Can you just mute and unmute the mic? A few people are complaining about audio issues. Right now? Sorry, about that. sorry about that. Carry on. So we just had some audio issues, so I just muted, unmuted. Hopefully uh, anybody who has experienced some issues with the sound, maybe it's fixed. Um, keep it coming in if there is anything going on with the sound or anything like that, we can kind of uh, fix those issues. So what we're looking at here um, in the landing page for uh, the OSS Construction Cloud is all of the projects that I have access to. So um, this is a way, if you've got permissions on a project, and whether it was in a previous platform, maybe BIM 360 um, or the new platform, Autodesk uh, Construction Cloud, you can search all of those. So this is really going back to that unification. Um, whether it's a project on BIM 260 or the new one, it's all searchable in here. So I'm gonna jump into one of my projects uh, that I have access to, uh, this London Hospital 2021. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'll go through in the order that the PowerPoint was in just to keep it kind of continuous. So we're gonna look at docs first. Now, um, docs, like I say, comes with your AEC collection and there is so much power in this tool just with docs, if you're only using docs. Um, so the first thing we're gonna look at is the, the files area. So it is a folder-based structure. Um, the way that the permissions work in here, so maybe I just want the architects to be able to see something in here, nobody else. Um, I can actually give people permissions two folders, um, right down to uh, individual people. I can do it based on roles. Uh, so I have the architects added in here. Um, and what this means is anybody that's added to this project as an architect is automatically gonna get permissions to this particular folder in whatever order I give it. So really, really nice granular permissions. And you can actually, with those role-based permissions, save them out into your templates. And then the next project, um, same folder structure, same role-based permissions, it'll save you a ton of time setting up your projects and be really consistent as you move forward as well. Uh, so really nice permissions in there. Um, if we jump into um, some of the kind of just viewing capabilities inside of this platform, if I just jump into perhaps what we're doing with a work in progress Revit file here, um, the first thing we see here is we have nine versions. Now, the reason we have so many versions on this is because this particular model is actually a work shared central model. So I would be using Collaborate Pro if I needed to do this. But if you are using Autodesk Docs and you don't need to create a central model, if you're just going to be working standalone in a non-work shared file, you could upload your models into Autodesk Docs and work on them through the cloud. So just with Autodesk Docs, you can actually work directly from a Revit file in the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And what that's going to mean is every time I publish to create a new version, it's going to make it easier for uh, any, anybody managing the project who needs to kind of come in here and view the changes that have happened and kind of see what's going on with the project to do those kind of things. So what I've got in my uh, sheets in here on the left is all of the, the things that I've published. And you can control what you publish from Revit. So if there's things you don't want to publish, things that aren't ready yet, you can decide what you publish from Revit. So it doesn't just, it's not showing me everything here inside this model. It's just showing me the things that I wanted to publish. Um, so jumping into this model, it's quite a big model as well. So you can kind of see um, how well um, this, this navigates with quite a large project. But if I wanted to see the changes that have happened between those versions, um, I can actually compare between any of the versions. Uh, but I've got a really nice compare function here that's going to, because this is a Revit file, pick out the specific changes in the project. So if I compare the changes here, I've got things that have been added, and I can actually filter by these as well. So if I wanted to see everything that's been added, I've got, you can see here their doors. Um, if I wanted to see what's been modified, there's tons of ways to, to filter this down. So with a model that, that's this big, we could have thousands of changes perhaps. And while there's a small amount here, what I can actually do is I can filter by discipline. So if I wanted to just see the architectural elements that have been modified, and then if I wanted to see maybe just the category that's been modified. I can actually filter down onto 
really specific things in my model um, that are going to make a difference. So down here, I've got a door. And what I can do is I can just quickly see here that it's just been moved across. So I can see what's happened between version 9, version 8. We've just had a couple of doors move about. Um, so this is really useful. I mean, you can do this in the 3D, but actually because you also will get the 2D versions of those um, of sheets, if you decide to publish them from Revit, you can do exactly what I've done there in a more systematic way, perhaps using the 2D um, compare features. So again, this is version nine against version eight. And if I was wanting to perhaps um, view the model as a whole, what the compar comparison is showing me, and then maybe see what those things are in each of those levels, I've got exactly the same functionality again. And I can just see that door then in plan. It's a really nice way to manage your project. Um, so obviously as well, some of the other options I've got when I'm in there, I can, I can view the properties inside the Revit model. I've got access to the uh, browser tree in there as well. So um, there's lots of different options in terms of how I want to actually view this. Um, I can do it in perspective. I can actually fly into the building in first person. Um, so there's some really nice tools there if you're having meetings in the project and you kind of want to um, maybe just talk about things um, in there. It's just nice ways to be able to kind of easily walk around your model. So that's a Revit file. Um, obviously, we have lots and lots of different file types in here that we can view. So we also have the ability, obviously, to view PDFs. Now, there's actually two folders in here. One of these has a little tick next to it. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate with PDFs is one of the new ISO 19650 features. This is going to be a bit of an um, on-the-fly kind of test. So it's really just to show you how that new feature works. Um, so if I just grab, well, first of all, what I'll do is I'll just quickly show um, PDFs in here. It's a really nice viewer. Um, we have much the same as how we were just viewing that 2D view in the last view. If we upload a PDF with the same name, we're going to get the next version. And we do actually then have options to compare um, PDFs against each other as well. So a common deliverable is PDFs and all of those compare features. They don't work quite the same. What they'll do is they'll overlay the two drawings on top of each other. I'll showcase that with the LWGs because it works exactly the same. Um, but we can really easily see the changes in PDFs as well. Um, so very quickly, just to demonstrate that ISO 19650, that new tool that's come about, it's, um, it's a tool that um, if you're a document manager, it's going to be really useful to, to use that, that tool to be able to actually um, kind of save you time when you're uploading models. You've been given all the drawings. Um, all, of the, um, all of the drawings on the project uh, have been given names correctly. So um, we might see this uh, maybe locally. We've been handed these PDFs. And if I just grab all these PDFs and drag them into this folder, what I've predetermined pre on this project is how these naming convention should work in this folder. So when I upload it, what it's going to do is it's going to search through the names, look for a delimitator, and then it's going to tell me if something is wrong. So if something doesn't conform to the way or the naming convention that should be in there. And I can actually see all of these do conform. Um, and there's really nice ways, uh, once I've got this here, to be able to actually um, update things like revision. Uh, so I have to know these are P1 and the status to all these are S1. Um, there are rules that you can set up in here as well. Um, and then you can actually attach things like classifications. So these are all drawings. I can attach the classification to the end of this. Um, and I can rename and validate and then upload this to the folder. Um, so there is a little caveat to that. I have two files, perhaps, that look like they don't actually conform to this. So what I can do here is I could rename these if I wanted to from here. This will actually update the file of uh, the PDF name. But what I can also do, um, if I just upload these to the folder, it shouldn't take too long to upload them, um, is if things don't conform, I have what's called a holding area in the project that I'm working on. And this is going to contain anything that doesn't conform to that file name convention. So if there are things that I shouldn't be changing the names of, and I need to get back to someone, figure out what the issues are with the name, and then come back on here and upload them, I could do that and save them into my holding area. So I just have them there as a kind of reminder to do those things. So that is a really useful tool for um, anybody who has to manage naming conventions when they're uploading files to um, Autodesk Docs. And that is a feature inside of Autodesk Docs. So having a look at some of the other um, 
other files that we can view inside of this platform. We also have Navisworks, the capability to be able to view Navisworks files, so really useful for any contractors out there who might need to share federated files, um, view the entire um, view the entire model that you have with all of the aggregated models together. Um, we can actually turn off models. If you do use Navisworks files, really useful inside of here, actually, it brings the views through as well. Um, so this allows you to save views inside of Navisworks, upload them into here, and then share those views with others as well. So we've got all the models in here. This is every single, um, every single one of the models I have for this at the moment. So all of the mechanical, plumbing, et cetera. And I can really easily do the search for elements if I was looking for them, hide elements. Um, I've got about levels in this one because it's actually a Navisworks file. Um, and I've got all the views as well coming from there. Um, so really useful viewing tools for your 3D files. It will also work with IFC files. Um, and so any design files that you have, it's going to work with really, really well. Uh, but the other thing to mention is not just design files are going to be uh, useful inside this platform. So if you have Excels, PowerPoint, Word documents, Autodesk Docs works with Office 365, and you can just grab um, any of these things, and you can actually then just edit uh, these documents in place, and that saves the new version. You can always go back to an older version, uh, but really, really handy for not having to like, download something, upload it, and having multiple versions of that document kind of strewn all over the place. Um, so obviously you need permissions to be able to edit these. Uh, if you just had the only permissions, you wouldn't be able to actually uh, edit these documents, but really, really useful, um, not just for design files, but also for those kind of just general day-to-day -day duty files that you get. Um, coming just quickly back onto some of the other files that you get here, uh, Mark Calloway has also mentioned that Autodesk 2022 um, comes with the ability to push things to Autodesk Docs. Um, what you can actually also do, I'm just very quickly going to show you this, is that um, you have in Autodesk 2022 a new tab in AutoCAD 2022 that allows you to actually work directly again from Autodesk Docs on a DWG. When you select one of these, start working on it, it locks it out. So you've got a little lock state here. As soon as someone starts working on this, it's theirs. Um, and then all those changes that you make. So if you do make changes to those files, you can view exactly the same way as I was comparing, uh, almost exactly the same way I was comparing the versions from uh, the Revit file. I can actually overlay the two uh, the CAD files that I have in here and see those changes as well. So again, a really useful way to be able to manage changes. Uh, it looks like these don't quite line up. Uh, just maybe move this between these versions. But you can actually move the documents over the top of each other um, and compare them quite easily as well. Um, so another new feature, and this one is going to be for anybody perhaps who has a smaller service base, it's quite useful. Um, you can actually upload point clouds. You can view these point clouds on Autodesk Docs now as well. So if you have any point clouds that you kind of need to archive, it might be a good uh, reason to start using Autodesk Docs. Um, and not only that, if you do upload them um, to Autodesk Docs, there is the ability to be able to actually view the images within the scans that you've got and also the little map that you've got here. Um, and this actually connects to recap. So if you make annotations inside Autodesk Docs, you can actually pick those annotations back up in recap. It's really, really nice communications go backwards and forwards in here. So we do have these kind of annotations, these images we've got. Um, we can yeah, pick those up in recap as well. Um, so there is tons more file types in here that it will take, um, but you can kind of see that it's a very versatile tool. Um, the other thing to mention as well, all of this is can be connected to your Windows Explorer using the desktop connector. So if you've ever used Dropbox, that's a very similar tool in there. So once you've got all the files in the project, once you start working on this project, you start uploading things to it, some of the tools that you have at your disposal to really kind of get you um, communicating with the design team or designers, site, et cetera. Um, we have things like, first of all, reviews. Um, so the PDFs that I uploaded earlier, what I could do um, is I actually have a review set up that means that if I push this into a review, um, it gets reviewed by whoever needs to review it in a certain amount of time, and then it will actually get them published to uh, my shared uh, folder in here. Now, it's just a, as an example of a workflow that you can set up in here, um, but it really kind of displays the ability to align with um, some of the standards that are out there, being able to push information into um, shared, published, and archived using approval workflows. 
Um, and they're very easy to initiate. So if somebody was uh, looking to do this, you would select your things that you want to share, submit for review. You'd only have access to your review processes, put it in the correct review process, and that would then initiate that um, along the line. Um, along with that as well, you get transmittals in Autodesk Docs, which allows you to package up um, information and send it. So quite useful for bidding and tender if you need something to track some paper trail of um, things that have actually been sent and downloaded. Um, transmittals would be quite useful for that. Um, some of the other tools you've got in Autodesk Docs as well, you've got issues. This is actually really, really, um, a really, really big one. Um, you can add these onto sheets and these contain information about um, what people might be able to change. Uh, so we could have quality issues in here, clash issues, et cetera. Um, I'm going to come on to these um, in one of the other demonstrations that I do with Coordinate. Um, and all of the information and issues can then be reported. So um, Autodesk Docs on its own has an unbelievable amount of uh, useful and powerful tools within it to help you out. Um, and all these reports here, they can actually be automated as well and scheduled. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the, um, the other tools that we were talking about. So again, Autodesk Docs is in the AC collection. The tools I'm about to look at, they are not in the AC collection. These are modules that you can get and bolt on to Autodesk Docs. Um, so the first one I'm going to look at is Design Collaboration. Um, so there's Collaborate Pro and Collaborate. Collaborate Pro is going to allow designers who work in native software to a 3D plant, Revit, to be able to push the information and work off that information for that design file from the cloud. Um, the collaborate without the pro is for document managers who might need to publish the information from those things. Um, so what we have in design collaboration, if we just have a look at the module we have in the cloud, uh, the main kind of experience of this is the swim lane. Um, so if we're looking at perhaps uh, some of the teams we've got on this project, and these could be discipline, they could be departmental, it really depends on how you, maybe you want to set this up. But there's a really nice workflow for being able to share your information through what are called packages. So each one of these little dots represents information that these teams have shared at certain points um, and the shapes and, and things about them represent different things. So I can see here actually from the architectural team, they've published a, a model that I haven't yet consumed. And the workflow goes that from the structured point of view, maybe every two weeks, one week, we're getting new models that we would need to use as context to model our structures. Now, because the architects published this, what I could do is um, I can do what's called consuming this. And if I do that, there is also a workflow in the background that will then update my Revit links so that I can then have the latest model from the architects, maybe every week, every two weeks, however we're doing it. Um, but before I consume it, the point of this is that I can show the changes they've made. So if there's things in that architectural model that are going to affect my model, I can look at those before I use it as a link. So it's a really useful tool to make sure there's nothing, no surprises in the project. There's nothing that's gonna come up and, and kind of um, blows out the water in terms of what we were thinking the design was going. Um, and we can always look back on everything that's been um, shared here. So this tool is just a really, really nice way to be able to view all the handovers in the project, all the major handovers. So this could be quite a formal procedure in terms of what's being shared on the project. Um, and inside these packages, it isn't just um, models that can be shared in here as well. It's actually also documents. So if you have information like spec sheets, PDF drawings, et cetera, that need to be shared along with the model, you can actually also share those things as well. So this could be a very formal handover on the project um, if you were to use perhaps this product in various different ways. Um, so that's the swim lanes. Um, other tools that you have in here, uh, just to kind of talk about these, um, you can actually uh, focus on the changes in your project as well. So um, if you are perhaps looking, I mean, what's maybe quite a common one is perhaps as the electrical engineers, you host a lot of your elements to an architectural wall. You need to know whether the architect is going to delete or move any of those things so that your components aren't going to move you can actually focus and see changes that are happening specific on specific families, categories within the model to kind of make sure you're picking up on those changes that are happening. Um, and inside this module as well, really usefully, we have meetings. This is going to allow us to just keep minutes, agendas, invite people, make sure that we fix things perhaps that um, have been talked about in sort of the, the coordination meetings perhaps. Um, 
but making sure again that all the information is just in that one nice condensed place for us to be able to access to any point. So that's design collaboration. And like I say, the, the main bulk of the collaboration pro is the fact that inside of Revit, inside of Plant 3D, and inside of Civil 3D, you can host your files on the cloud and you can work on them in a team. Um, so if you get Collaborate or Collaborate Pro, you also get the module model coordination. Um, so what I'm actually going to do in here is I'm going to just open up my docs area again, just because I want to quickly talk about where this information is coming and what is actually possible. So I've just flipped back to my model coordination screen here. So um, what we're looking at in this list of models here is um, all the views that have been released when they've been shared to that swim lane that we just liked, I looked at in the collaboration module. Um, so this, this specific area, so if I just change to that area here, um, this area that we're just about to look at is those live models. If somebody shares something, if I'm the contractor and maybe I need to keep an eye on these things as they're coming out, maybe just have an eye on sort of like the big clashes, the things that are going to mean the most to me, I can have a look at those automatically in here. So these are all the models that are coming out um, of my project. I can kind of open any of these up here. I can uh, view them in any way that I want. Uh, so I can federate these all if I wanted to, um, or I could just choose specific ones. Um, what this is doing in the background is, like I said, creating that clash module. So in here, I have all of those models clashed together. Uh, what I could do in here is if I just perhaps hide all the models and just choose the first floor uh, mechanical, and I'll choose the first floor structures here. So again, these views are being published from Revit. So this is how you kind of control how this clash matrix is um, kept in terms of making sure the numbers are um, kind of kept down a little bit, how you kind of structure your model. Uh, so we actually have no clashes between those two. Um, I can choose level two and work on this fairly systematically. And it is actually possible to save these views as well. So if you are somebody who's going back to these all the time and you're getting the updates and you need to make sure there's no new clashes, um, you can always save these views out, which is what I'll show in a second. So if I just click on these four clashes I've got between the second floor. What it will do in here is, um, this is mechanical versus uh, the structures. So we're getting some clashes here between the ducts and the, um, and the structural floor. So perhaps if this is early stages, this isn't actually so much of a problem. Um, perhaps we would want to have structurally maybe the um, penetration showing here. Um, but what we can do is we can drill down into each of the components that are clashes. We can actually create an issue from this as well. So if this is something that we need to kind of communicate to somebody, what I could do here is this is probably going to end up being something that maybe the structural engineer needs to fix. Um, so if I select the structural floor um, with this issue, what I'm going to be able to do is with this issue, and these are the same issues that we were looking at previously in our docs, is assign that issue to the structural engineer. Um, I don't think I have one of those projects, so it's going to have to be myself. Um, fill in all of this information. It does fill in what the clash is. It does actually create a little uh, thumbnail of where you've taken the picture from as well. Um, you can add in things like due date. I'll need some by tomorrow. I'm for a cash manager. Um, you can add in things like root cause. All of this information is going to be really useful when we have thousands of clashes, um, maybe um, a year down the line. And we want to be able to find the specific one. I can search any of the data I put in here. So I've, as long as I've got kind of structured approach to putting in this information, it's going to make it very easy to, to find these things. Um, so the other thing to mention with this as well is new in the construction cloud is now that that clash has actually been assigned to a user, um, they will get an email um, and there are ways of reducing notifications or getting multiple notifications every hour or day so you don't get swamped by them. Um, he'll be able to, they will be able to open up that issue and then work on it directly inside of Revit. They'll actually be able to open up the new issues tool inside of Revit, open up that issue, find the specific problem, read the data about it, um, action it, change something inside of Revit, um, and then reply essentially to that issue. So change the issue from perhaps open to in review, um, and then that will then come back to myself to look at and make sure that they have actually done that. So the next time that they publish the model, what I would expect to see is that that issue has changed. And so what you can see here now in the clash matrix is I have three clashes in here because it's taking away the one that I've assigned. 
and what I would be doing would be keeping a close eye on the changes in my assigned issues in here for um, the changes that have been made. Um, so a really, really nice way and a really simple way of actually keeping tabs on major clashes in the project. Um, what we're finding is with customers that actually, because this interface is just happening automatically, it's a really nice, just basic spell checker. Even if you're not using some of the major functionalities in it, you're getting an automatic clash report essentially, which is going to give you a really good breakdown as long as your Revit publications are um, coming out uh, as you kind of want to clash them. Um, the other really important thing to mention about the model coordination is that actually uh, it does link to your Navisworks as well. So there are ways to actually pick up all of these models. And while this might not only be picking up hard clashes, you can clash all of these inside of Navisworks as well. Um, so these exact models, when I say these exact models, I mean the live models as well. There is a link to Navisworks that will allow you to do your kind of formal clash detection if you wanted to and create issues inside of Navisworks as well. So there's really nice workflows there uh, for um, making sure the coordinators in the project have kind of all the latest information. Um, and what you can also do as well is um, you can actually create multiple um, spaces that you can clash. So if you wanna make sure that maybe the architect and just the mechanical services, they're working quite closely together or something along those lines, perhaps, you could create a space for them and they could upload their files to that space. Um, and, and they could just run clash detections with each other and just kind of have um, that open dialogue with each other with those, those clashes. Um, so you can create those spaces and, and open this up to, to people on the project. Uh, but that is new with Collaborate. So um, when you get Collaborate or Collaborate Pro, you are going to get this module, either one of its side uh, will come with it. Um, so some of the other th useful things inside of here, especially if you are somebody who is a, a coordinator on a project, is that you can actually save the, the model views. So this is what I was mentioning earlier. If you do come into this kind of all the time, you need to quickly get to those kind of clashes or those areas with those models in. You can save the views out, the, the combinations of the models, and you can actually clash multiple models against each other. So I'm clashing my um, mechanical model here against two other models. Um, so that is a, a great tool if you're looking to kind of get um, an aggregation, not just one against one, but one against two. Um, and there are also ways as well to break down your clash. So you can use system name or the type name inside those clashes, um, really kind of drilling down on uh, kind of grouping clashes together. So we've got 14 clashes on just this system here. So let's collaborate, collaborate pro. Um, I'm probably gonna have to move on. The meetings area from here is the same as the one previously. Again, really useful if you're having coordination meetings, design meetings keeping all the minutes and the agendas in the one place. Uh, so the next tool we're gonna to look at is Takeoff. Um, takeoff is a really, really good application for um, constant takeoffs, something I used to do. So I would use, of course, this Design Review 2013 for anybody um, who's looking at this, it does takeoffs. Um, what this uh, allows you to do is essentially, it's pretty easy set up. There's the three steps at the top here. It basically just walks you through this. So the first thing you need to do on the project is set up a classification system. Uh, so if you're using NRM or if you're using UniClass or if you have your own, you can just import a, a spreadsheet. Uh, and I've created my own here actually. So I've kind of been just adding to this. Um, you can upload it and then just keep on adding classifications to it as you went. But the idea being maybe that your packages that you're gonna create in here of the takeoffs align with your kind of scope of works. Um, so I got some really basic takeoffs in here. I've got double doors you need to add a measure. Um, you can actually add a secondary classification system as well. So maybe you're doing takeoffs for yourself and also there's a reason why you need to, to add the NR NRM codes. You can do that as well inside of here. Um, so once you set up the classification systems, uh, you'd add the sheets and the 3D models that you wanna use, um, which is also actually a really easy process. So um, if you had uh, maybe those PDFs earlier that we were looking at, I wanted to use those. Um, what I can do is head to the files area inside of my takeoff um, area. And then if I just navigate to those PDFs, what I'm going to be able to do is, as long as I have access to them, of course, um, I could select the ones that I need to do takeoffs from, and then I can just publish this to the takeoff and sheets models. So there's a really nice workflow to make sure that all your latest drawings are actually in your takeoff area as well. Um, so once you've 
added the sheets, added the uh, 3D models. It's just then a case of doing takeoffs. And um, it works both 2D and 3D. So if you, if you kind of wanted to ease your way into this, um, you could carry on perhaps if you were used to 2D doing the takeoffs in 2D. Um, and the way it works is uh, much the same as um, some of the other takeoff software out there. You have the option, uh, so if I just, so I have all my, my sheets and my 3D models in here. I can bookmark the ones that are the ones I'm doing the takeoff from. And then what I can do inside my takeoff area is I can start adding takeoffs and I can see I've already got some pins in here. So if I grab perhaps this flow redundant heat here, I just want to add a few more because I've missed them. Just put them here. And you can see this is going to then add to the count. Um, but really, really easy kind of to use and to set up. I can filter by uh, lots of different options in here uh, by levels, whether there's takeoffs against the sheets, filter by the classifications in here as well. Um, but all of this is going into uh, my inventory. So the inventory is essentially where you're going to take off is, is being built. Everything you add to this, whether it's floor areas, um, linear meters of things, the count we've got here, it's all going into this inventory. And this is where I would be doing my takeoffs. Um, and from this, I could then export to Excel. Um, and this is where I could perhaps do some cost analysis if I needed to. Um, and get those quantities out to something that um, I'm going to be using perhaps elsewhere. Um, so that's the 2D version of the takeoff. Uh, what I also have in here as well is the 3D. So obviously most of the time nowadays, the um, model is kind of dictating how the drawings are going to be made as well. So if there's any discrepancies in the drawings, there is also probably going to be discrepancies in the model. Um, but if we trust the model, if we're happy with uh, kind of how this is going to work as um, a takeoff system, then there's a lot we can do and a lot of automation uh, with the 3D side of this. And so I have the mechanical model here. Um, one of the really cool things, uh, I, actually, I don't think it's um, that gimmicky, but um, you can actually break the model down into all of its categories. Um, so this lays everything out on the table um, and it kind of really allows me to just drill down into, into things within some of these areas. So I can see there's quite a lot of duct fittings. If I was perhaps just doing a takeoff on a particular type of duct fitting, um, I can right click on it and I can select all of the standard. So it uses the type in there. And then from here, um, I can create a, a takeoff. So give it a name, add it to the correct part of the classification system. Um, Elbow. So if I've got, I don't think I have duct fittings in here, I'll put it in duct supply. Um, it's going to take out the parameter for meters in here, so the distance, um, and then I can start take off, and then it's going to add that to my inventory. Um, so that was obviously very quick. I would probably spend a bit more time trying to figure out exactly like what it is I'm doing the takeoff from, but you can see there's a lot of power in here when it comes to using the model. So I'll just pop that back into the model there. Um, so really, um, if you've got this, what it allows you to do is to work as a team when you're doing takeoffs. And also all your takeoffs are in the same place. They're not in a folder on your desktop, um, in an Excel spreadsheet, you've got saved seven or eight times with different names. All of your takeoffs are in one nice, easy to, to locate place. And it makes it a lot easier as well to look at the, um, the newest, latest versions of the models and the drawings. Um, so that's all to just take off. Um, some of the things I, I didn't showcase is you can actually scale quite easily in there if you have the PDFs already had a scale in there. Um, so um, yeah, those kind of things are made really, really easy to nest as well. Um, so the last thing we're gonna look at is Autodesk Build. And this is a pretty chunky module to be honest in terms of functionality. I'm really gonna kind of look at the main bits of it. Um, so first of all, it's very nice. Uh, if you're looking at this kind of from the office point of view, you get a nice kind of interface, you're managing this. First thing you'll see is the home page with things overdue, whether your team has sync for the mobile app, which is very important to know to make sure your team working from the latest drawings on site. Um, any of the latest things that happen on the project, I can filter by, but just a way of kind of making decisions quite quickly sort of thing if I'm coming and using build. Um, I'll quickly run through some of the main, like I say, some of the main features in here. Sheets is a really, really important one. Um, Sheets allows you to um, extract information for PDFs, put them into here, and these are then accessible on site um, and all searchable as well. You put these into sets, um, really making sure you have the latest version of that drawing on site. 
Uh, we've been through the files already, but you do have access to this and then here's just off their stocks. Um, but one of the things I didn't mention was that at the top here you have for the field. Um, so this allows you to, if there's things that need to, that aren't drawings, that shouldn't go in the sheets area, you can put those in for the field and then people can access things like installation guides, um, spec sheets, things like that, that, that aren't drawings. Um, again, we have issues in here. Um, one of the main features really is uh, forms, smart PDFs. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is, um, again, technology dependent, is jump into my uh, iPad and just quickly show you the site version of this uh, working. So really kind of showcasing the forms area and something I mentioned earlier about those smart PDFs. Um, so this is my iPad. Right here. Um, what I can do, uh, first of all, is um, I can download my project. So this means that I can work on this offline. You can see I have a little download option on the left that allows me to download my entire project and work on it offline if I need to. It would tell me if I don't have the latest version if I'm on Wi-Fi. Um, but once I come back onto Wi-Fi, if I've been off, all my updates will just happen through the Wi-Fi. Um, so I am working through, um, just to quickly show this, this it's called the, the Autodesk Plan Grid Build app. So I do have um, access there to my Plan Grid area as well. So that um, reason I'm just downloading that is because it's just picked up, but I do have some changes. Cool. Okay, so we have access to pretty much everything inside of Build that we have access to on the desktop. Um, like I say, one of the things I really want to look into Build is the smart PDF. So um, what I've done is I've taken a PDF that was perhaps paper, um, and then I've turned it into the smart PDF that I can then use on site. So if I'm going to site and I'm just going to pick up one of my GC01 site organization checklists here. Um, if I hit the plus in the right, right hand side at the top, perhaps I've gone to site, today is a site organization checklist day. Um, I can view my PDF here. And this might have been the PDF I have been using for the last 15 years on paper, and it's just now in that digital format. You can actually get it to fill in information for you automatically in the PDF based on the fields that you can add to the smart PDF. So man and machine and that London hospital project, you can actually get application to work as well, can be filled in automatically. As well, if I scroll to the bottom, my name and my role on this project. So some real kind of like uh, useful tools there to stop any kind of human error. So what I would then do, just fill this form in. Uh, so I'd work my way down this list. I've made this form, um, you can make this form. So if uh, you see the checks at the top here, so you can only fill in one tick as well, so it can be less mistakes and then one of the really important parts of this is that I can sign it. I've got that accountability in there as well. Um, so once I've filled all of this in, I can then hit save. Um, that's then part of this checklist. And if I really wanted to as well, I can add uh, photos to this, which is what I'll quickly do. Um, I can actually also add any files in here, uh, issues I can attach, forms. I can really, really kind of link up all of the information that's really important to this checklist. Um, so that, that thread and that unification of information that we talked about in the PowerPoint. Um, so once I finish with this, I could hit submit, uh, finish that off, and then that's going to be now saved to this area inside the forms area. But if you imagine uh, you're going through change on site to a digital format, um, that same format, that same option to fill in things, how you have always done, is going to make it a lot easier for, for change um, to change to digital. Um, just very quickly, some of the other things you've got in here. Um, you've got assets, RFIs, you can access all of these things from here as well. One of the cool things is the photos. Um, so like I was saying earlier, perhaps you've, you've gone into this project and you see a photo and you're like, well, that's, that's really important to me. What is that actually attached to? Um, you've got all of the information about what it's referenced by. So inside of this photo, I can see it's referenced by my GCO1 site organization. If it had assets attached to it, I'd be able to see those. And I can start following that thread of information based off just a really quick snippet of something that I've just seen that I think might be important to me. Um, so yeah, really, really useful for actually kind of getting that sort of information. Also quite useful as well, the GPS location for the pictures does come through into the uh, app. So um, if you've got a big site, it's not 100% accurate, but you can see there that it's actually got my location. And if I took photos, perhaps in different areas, that's gonna be really useful for me to kind of understand where on site that photo was kind of actually taken as well. Um, so there's loads of other really useful features in here. You can tag the photos. Um, the assets here is really useful for making sure that you have everything in one nice deep place. Um, but I think we're going to probably have to 
um, look at wrapping up uh, the demonstration there. Um, so really kind of rounding this off and going back to my first point, the, 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 the construction cloud is all about that unification. We've looked at a lot of tools here that are for different um, departments, different places, and all of them have really useful tools in their own right. Um, so like I said, right at the beginning, we can support, we can train, we can um, help set up with these things. Um, but really going back to my other point about the AC collection now containing those desktops, um, that's a really useful tool just if you have it to utilize. Um, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, thank you very much, guys. I hope you have a, a wonderful day um, and I'll let the next speaker jump up.